Hey, it's Rassicus here, and this is part two of my Splatoon Band Lore series. I'd suggest watching part one first if you haven't yet, if you want to get the full story. In this video, I will be talking about the fictional musicians that emerged during the time of Splatoon 2 from the game's launch up until Octo Expansion, all while following Wave 2 of this timeline in Haikata Walker. So, let's go. In an interview with Famitsu Magazine, Splatoon sound director Todo Minigishi aptly describes the changes in music of the first and second game. In the squid world of the first game, straightforward and rascally rock music was popular, but in the time of Splatoon 2, he thought of it as different genres emerging. He said that something he kept in mind was to make the music more mature, ska, and sometimes even more fashionable than before. Splatoon producer Hisashi Nogami says that not only did the trends change in the Splatoon world, but the tastes in music as well. And what he says really gives the feel of the times moving on between Splatoon 1 and 2 is the main theme, Incoming, performed in-universe by the next band I'll be talking about, Wet Floor. They are a young and energetic five-member rock band popular among the Inkopolis youth. They take influence from a variety of genres, such as jazz, soul, and EDM. They spend a lot of time in the studio, and claim to not be so good with crowds, but apparently they give great live performances that draw in new fans. Among its fans, Wet Floor is sought after for being post-Squid Squad, and among some of those Wet Floor fans, cover bands have sprung forth. There's a good amount to say about these guys, actually, because in the Splatoon 2 album jacket, there was an in-universe interview with Wet Floor. I think this interview is pretty obscure. I literally had no idea it existed until last year, and it was all in Japanese, so guess who translated it? Yeah. Anyways, first I'll talk about the band members. First off, Kagi. He plays the synth. He's an inkling, and, uh, yeah, his skin is almost the same color as his ink, and I don't know why there's no official info for this. So until something comes up, if ever, make your own headcanons. So here's my headcanon. So an inkling is born with their skin matching their ink color, and then when they reach the age of 14, they get full control of their transformational abilities. But also their skin becomes, like, you know, skin colored. Maybe there's inklings with mutations where their skin continues to match their ink color into adulthood? Okay, back to the actual lore. Kagi is the kind of guy who wants to restore some indie dignity to the Inkopolis music scene, which has been taken over by pop stars. He founded Wet Floor by gathering all the band members through social media. When it comes to songwriting, he lets others take the initiative, and he finds the studio more comfortable than the stage. Mizole is an inkling guitarist and the vocalist of Wet Floor. I think his name comes from the Japanese word Mizore, which can mean like snow or sleet, and I think his hair does look like that, but also it can mean grated daikon, which is something that is often served with fish. Mizore is shrewd, cutting, and cynical by nature. He likes vintage rock sounds and jazz and soul. Although rivaling Squid Squad, especially Ichia, the reality is, is that he cannot escape their influence. His personal creed is to always betray or exceed the expectations of others. He's in charge of composition alongside Ryan. Ryan is an inkling who is also on the guitar and vocals, and she plays with a bass-heavy sound. I know her name looks like it's supposed to be Ryan, but all the members of Wet Floor have names with Japanese pronunciation, so it's Ryan. She is inspired by punk rock, particularly Squid Squad. Again, she's a composer alongside Mizore, but they often disagree with each other. Though in the end, it often works out as they complement each other's styles. Kazumi is a candy crab drummer who uses her several limbs to create a stable backbeat for the band. For her name origin, Kazumi is a girly name, but it's also one ten ten away from Kazumi, which is the word for the Japanese swimming crab. I know she's not a swimming crab, she's a candy crab, but still a crab. I think this is intentional. Up front, she seems like a cute girl who's not here to lose, and her work seems spontaneous and right-brained. But she's actually a very technical musician who trains relentlessly. 
She even beats herself up over how she sounds in the recordings, but she never shows that side of herself to her bandmates. Kazumi thinks Don't Slip is the hardest song for her to play because of the weird time signature Yan wrote. The thing that she likes most is watching Mizore and Yan have fun, but also bicker during the performance as she sits behind them. Tsumabushi is a cutthroat eel and the bassist of Wet Floor. I think that Tsuma in his name is the same Tsuma in Japanese that means a garnish that goes with sashimi. Tsumabushi is the kind of guy who likes to go at his own pace, and he has a big brother sort of personality. He's the only member of the band who does well in the mornings. He has a trademark string slapping style, and he can usually play a tune after listening to it only once, or after seeing the sheet music for the first time, so he can sight read music. He finds Undertow to be a tough song to play. Tsumabushi shares a friendly rivalry with the drummer of the band, Kazumi. Apparently, those two like to practice in secret together and even go into the studio a few hours before the rest of the band. So that's pretty much it for the band members' characterization, so now to talk a little bit more about their music. So for one thing, the album that we hear in-game is actually not their first. The name of their album that we hear in Splatoon 2 is called Incoming, which is also the name of one of their songs. They had a previous album called Color Rush, which had a different vibe to it than Incoming. The band members have also explained their songwriting process. The band has their own little collaborative cloud storage thing where one of them uploads a riff and the rest of the band members add on to it. The exception to this process happened with the song Endolphin Surge, where Mizore made the melody first, which is the intro to the song. Now their collaborative cloud thing is referenced in the title of one of their songs, Incoming Cloud Demo, which is the tutorial music. Kagi started the song, and then Tsumabushi added onto the song first, which is why it's heavy on the bass lines. Tsumabushi said that he held back on the bass lines in the final version of Incoming, but he didn't hold back for their song rip entry. For the lyrics, Mizole said that he was hesitant about writing them. Another note about the lyrics of Incoming, we actually got part of them written out phonetically in Japanese in this interview. Unsurprisingly, it's gibberish, but they're supposed to be a splash splat like Splatoon and also Anchor Sync. That's pretty much it for Wet Floor info. If you want to read my translation of the Wet Floor interview, I'll put a link to that in the description. Up next, Omega 3, the salmonid band that plays all the Salmon Run music. They use unusual time signatures throw in weird sound effects, and the musicians of the band are a weird combination of cello, timpani, and DJ. For salmonids, music always signifies the start of a salmon run and is played while they march to raise their morale. Among salmonid tribes, those who excel at the performing arts form a band and roughly three to five salmonid per battalion carry that duty. Out of the many bands that were true born with the title Omega, the group that formed Omega-3 are considered the fattiest group of them all. Now that last sentence I remember was really hard to translate because of how little context on salmonid culture there is. My theory for why the band Omega-3 is seemingly honored for being fatty is part of how salmonids prize not only being eaten after they die but also tasting good, and fatty meat generally tastes better. I'm now realizing I should have put that little tidbit about salmonid attitudes towards music in my salmonid lore video, so sorry everyone, it's here now. Something I did bring up in that salmonid video that I'm going to mention again now is that salmonids do not have personal names, but rather they go by a title that refers to what their tribe is known for. The translator for the titles of the band members was Clan Feyerunt, not me. These titles are likely to change with the official localization, but it's nice to have a translation to use until then. So now, on to the band members. First we have the cellist, who is a guy in his 50s and is the band's leader and composer. His title is the first child of Algen, the hidden blade of Yakiharas. He's stubborn, won't listen to anyone, and only appreciates the most radical works. However, he has a delicate side that really cares about the atmosphere of a place. He's also clumsy and can only express these feelings through song. 
The Timpani player is in his late 20s and goes by the title of the Valiant Green Flame Born of Trout Hell Canyon. I really wouldn't be surprised if this title gets changed in the official localization. You can't say hell in Splatoon, right? Never mind. This Timpani player bangs out the beats with all his heart and soul. He's a guy who's always facing ahead and striving towards his goals. He's not good at picking up the feelings of others, but his violent rhythms put the Salmonid warriors in high spirits. And last is the band's DJ, the loyal servant of the true Salmon King, Hizunamasu. He's the youngest of the group, and a real rough and rebellious individual. Even towards the older members of the group, he often acts and speaks disrespectfully. However, his reckless playstyle is actually fitting and creates a groove that shows the true worth of Omega 3's music. In regards to their music, I think it'd be interesting to talk about the meanings of the titles of their songs in Japanese, because those song names are kinda dark. First, the tutorial music, which is called Koko, or Vital Organs. There's a Japanese idiom that uses this word, yamai koko ni hayuru, which can mean to become hopelessly addicted or enslaved. Then, deluge dirge, which is called gogo, or clamor. The tutorial music and deluge dirge sound similar, just that the tutorial seems more quiet. If you've studied your phonetics, K and G are made in the same part of your mouth, the difference being G is voiced and K is voiceless, so it's like Gogo, Deluge Dirge, is the voiced version of Koko, or the tutorial. The song Fishing Frenzy is Ryuketsu, which means auspicious spot, or when literally translated, Dragon's Den. This plays during special waves where you can sometimes get more eggs, but it feels more ominous, so hey, fitting. And the last song, Frantic Aspic, which plays during the wildcard shifts, is called Toto in Japanese. This word has two definitions, the sound of water or waves resounding, or the sound of drums reverberating. Both of those seem fitting to the song and atmosphere of Salmon Run, so I thought that was cool. On the topic of Salmon Run, I feel like someone is going to yell at me if I don't mention the Grisco Industries music at all in this video, which is not on the timeline by the way. If you're ever wondering if Mr. Grizz is the musician behind the song, well, no. In a Famitsu interview, the sound director, Toru Minigeshi, mentions that Grizzko hired an outside producer to make the music. That's... that's all I got for you on that. Moving on. So a few months after the start of Splatoon 2, we get some more musicians added to the roster. And one of these is the classically trained, all-female, six-piece band, Ink Theory. They create jazz and samba-inspired battle music. They've been rapidly rising in popularity and owe their unique sound to a blend of academic music theory and modern sensibilities. Ink Theory's eclectic approach makes them quite popular with both young Inklings and middle-age Inklings alike. They recently debuted, but all the members have been learning music since childhood, so their playing techniques are the real deal. First, Yoko is an Inkling who plays the trumpets and is the band's frontwoman. She sometimes feels overshadowed by the other members' personalities. She has a mutation that allows her tentacles to have multiple colors, but it rarely proves useful. She is described as often getting nervous before large productions. She also has a weakness to atmospheric pressure. On rainy days, she is said to have a dead face, and while she struggles in sunny weather as well, she's a hard worker and always gives a solid performance. She has a sister in high school. For some reason, we got an explanation for why this girl can display several colors on her tentacles and not why Kagi is blue. I mean, I'm glad we did get an explanation for Yoko because until Haikata Walker came out, this was something that really bugged me. Seriously, what's up with Kagi? Next is Karin, who is a Nautilus and the band's pianist. There's a couple possible origins for Karin's name. So the Japanese name for the band is Current Rip, is written like Karen to Ripu. If you cut off a lot of the word, then you're left with Karen, her name. Another possibility is that it comes from the word Karen in Japanese, which means like sweet and lovely. This word is written on Yoko's hat in Ink Theory's Valentine's Day artwork from 2019, lending credibility to this idea. She graduated at the top of her class from a famous musical university. She participated in overseas competitions and has won many awards, as well as offering emotional support to the band. She provides the band with a crisp atmosphere and looks self-assured, though she worries that she's not loved by the fans. And if you look at the album art of High Tide Era and Ink Theory, you can see that the two bands have a similar taste and style. 
this is because she admits that she's a big fan of High Tide Era and declares that Ink Theory was formed due to their influence. BB is an Inkling who plays the kazoo. She graduated from the same music academy as the band's other members. She is closer to the public than the other members of the band and is renowned for her beauty, often being considered the flower of the band. As a result of this, she gets a lot of attention, often being pulled in front of the cameras. She is a large spender, but has never struggled much financially. It's also mentioned here that her fans call her Bibi-sama, which if you've studied Japanese or watched too much anime should recognize that as an honorific to refer to someone highly. Again, this is one of those things I can only guess how it's going to be handled in localization. Personally, I hope it's going to be localized as Queen Bibi, because that would be a funny play on Beyonce being called Queen Bee. Anyways... Achin is the band's bassist and a sea urchin of the species... I'm not pronouncing that. Her name is literally the English word for urchin, but written in Japanese. She grew up in a strict household with parents who are famous musicians. For a short while, she was hooked on bands with musical stylings that deviated away from her parents, but now she's seeing the wonders of classical music again in a new light. She is also romantically inexperienced, often falling for people who are self-degrading. Mayaya is an anemone, probably a different species than Annie or Particle, and she plays the percussion. She joined Ink Theory after graduating from a music academy. While her professor recommended she become a music instructor herself, she thought it would be a good idea to create her own music first. She mainly plays with Ink Theory, but occasionally freelances for other bands. Kitamura is the band's drummer and mascot. She has a high singing voice and regularly follows new fads. She lives by herself, paying close attention to her curfew. Now, at around the same time as Ink Theory, another band debuted, and that band was Bottom Feeders. Their music is a fusion of ancient Celtic sea shanties with punk rock, and they'd also been garnering popularity all over the world. The band was created in a country up north. They mainly perform live and spend most of the year on tour. They've been consistently using their own independent record label since debut. The organization of their live performances, as well as their song's progression, often change depending on the mood of the band's members. The first of these members is Tangle Bottom. He is a mozuku seaweed and the band's vocalist. I don't think I need to explain Tangle's name. His body is tangled and bottom like bottom feeders. If anyone is concerned about the concept of sentient plants in Splatoon, seaweed is not actually a plant, so don't worry. So he's a young man with a rebellious spirit. He is dissatisfied with the state of modern music and how voguish it's become, and is aiming to start a musical revolution based on music that's more straightforward. However, since the songs he makes are mediocre, the other members are really harsh on him. Up until recently, he wasn't sure where his voice was coming from, but it turns out his body produces sound through the friction between the string-like organs that, you know, make up his body. He was delighted to learn that he can even sing with his feet. Finn Bottom is a beta fish who plays the violin. All the members of Bottom Feeders have Bottom as a last name, despite being totally different species, so I think it's a stage name. So no matter how much the world changes, Finn wants to share the goodness of the sound of traditional music to the world. Due to their stubborn personality and how they do things in their own way, they frequently end up clashing with the other members of the band, leading to the band nearly dissolving on multiple instances. Muruta Bottom is a yeso scallop on the guitar. Unlike Finn Bottom and Tangle Bottom, they're not as particular about the sound of the band and is fine with anything as long as they're having fun. Has a weakness for cute girls. Fuka Bottom is a shark of some sort on the bass who likes motorcycles and meat. Fuka is the Japanese word for shark, hence the name. Much like Muruta Bottom, Fuka is fine with doing anything as long as they're having fun. Low Bottom, yeah I hate that name, is a blowfish hence their name, and the band's drummer. Like Muruta Bottom and Fuka Bottom, they also don't care much about the band's sound as long as they're having fun. They're a member of a Rainmaker team with drummers from other bands, one of which I talked about already, Kuze. Blow has an only daughter who they deeply love and adore. 
Even though Bottom Feeders debuted at the same time as Ink Theory, they're not on good terms with them at all. However, they actually did a live show together at the legendary Seaman Live in a place called Zap Square. Their burning rivalry caused the energy of the performance to continuously and rapidly rise. So perhaps the poor combination of the two turned out surprisingly well in the end. There's one last artist I'd like to talk about in this part. DJ Real Soul. DJ Real Soul is responsible for one song, New You, which is what's played in the Galleria, like when you buy clothes and hats and stuff. This song has four variations to match the different personalities of the shopkeepers. While a soul is a type of fish, it's better known as the thing at the bottom of a shoe, and in Sunken Scroll 6 and Splatoon 2, there's a picture of Bisque with the sheet music for New You, so I think it's more than likely that Bisque is DJ Real Soul. However, at the start of this video, I said I wanted to focus on characters that are pretty much just musicians that don't have characterization beyond being musicians, and it's not even outright stated that Bisque is DJ Real Soul, despite how likely it is. So I think that's all I will say not only about this DJ, but also Wave 2 of the Splatoon Band timeline. Thank you to my patrons for your support, it means a lot to me, and thank you guys for watching so far! I have another part planned to cover the musicians of Wave 3, so I hope you stick around for that.